Thanks, Goose. Now let's travel down below and listen to the song of the deep. Merin loved the sea. At night, her father sang her songs about his great adventures. He sang of giant leviathan serpents, haunted caves, and a lost city of gold beneath the sea. Merin knew the stories weren't real, but she loved to listen to them. She drifted off to sleep. Song of the Deep is a story about Merin, a 12-year-old girl who lives with her father by the sea. At night, he would tell her fantastic stories of ancient underwater cities and terrifying creatures. But one night, Merin's father doesn't come home, so naturally she builds a tiny and adorable submarine to go and look for him. She hammered and bolted, she measured and sawed. She quickly learns that all of his stories were all true. This underwater platformer is from developer Insomniac Games, the makers of Sunset Overdrive and Ratchet and & Clank. But it is by a smaller team within Insomniac and a passion project for Chief Creative Officer Brian Hastings. He said he wanted to create a character that my daughter could look up to, not for what she looked like, but for who she was. And Marin is a resilient, persistent girl facing a world of unknown mystery and danger. This kind of puzzle platformer is quite different to the games we usually play because it takes place entirely underwater, which adds a lot of interface complications. And Hex, you know how I feel about underwater levels and underwater games. Yeah, you're not a fan. I don't like them, Hex. They're usually laggy, horrible affairs, with the exception of Echo the Dolphin. <laughs> But Song of the Deep has a lot of charm, so I'll push my underwater bias deep down for now. Go into the open ocean with an open mind, Bajo. This is a Metroidvania-style side-scroller. And that means the levels are full of environmental puzzles and barriers that you can see but can't initially bypass. You slowly unlock core abilities, which then open up new sections of the map, as well as allow you to track back and nab all of those little items that you couldn't reach before. So there's plenty of rewarding exploration. I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with Metroid-style games, Hex, because, you know, I just, I just hate it when I can see something that I want to get and there's a barrier and I know I can't yet and I'm going to have to come back later and get it. Oh, just give me it now, <laughs> give me it! I get frustrated. Yeah, I mean, I know what you mean, but for me it just triggers that desire to, you know, really crack the game's puzzles. They've done such a great job of making everything really clear with this game, so the moment you do unlock a piece of gear or ability to get past a barrier, then you know exactly what you have to do and, and where to go. And that's not always the case with these games. Yeah, and you don't need to collect every coin and gem that's in the game, but those submarine upgrades are so good. <laughs> Soon you acquire a magnetic claw, which allows you to drag objects. She took out her tools and attached it to a firing mechanism on her steering column. Smash through weak walls and fight off jellyfish. Side note, jellyfish are the only thing I didn't like in Echo the Dolphin, and they're just as annoying here. <laughs> Jellyfish? Why are they so aggressive, Hex? You're invading their marine space, I guess. Oh, chill out. <laughs> your hook can also be upgraded and it becomes a very important part of your arsenal. Eventually, you obtain an upgrade, a boost to help fight undersea currents, a torpedo, a magma mine, a freeze torpedo, and sonar, which can be used to shatter glass. The best part about all these upgrades, though, is how they're used in such surprising and clever ways. Yeah, the drip feed of these upgrades is just right, and it's a big part of what pulls you through this game. You get this constant stream of little rewards, which immediately get explored and exploited within nearby puzzles, such as freezing mines and guiding them to breakable walls or switches, rebuilding statues to open doors, or leaving the sub altogether to scrape away barnacles or redirect light. Ah, reflecting light in games. You know, it had been almost long enough between light reflection puzzles for me to be ready for another one, Bajo, but not quite. I mean, look at this. Yeah, there's quite a few of them. I didn't mind them, though. And I actually really enjoyed the ones in this kind of mechanical changing security station section. With adorable mechanical turtles. Carrying a turtle into its shell appeared to cause the beams of that colour to shut off. Yeah, actually, that section was pretty clever. In fact, almost all of the puzzles are fun to solve because the solutions always feel within your grasp, and they're rarely fiddly. This is helped by physics and controls, which still give you the feeling of being submerged under the sea, but with enough responsiveness to get everything done. That said, there are still one or two maddening moments, though, aren't there? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like the section with these indestructible squids that are terrifying 
and will not stop chasing you. To the point where I actually thought the game might be bugging out as they seem to come through walls. I struggled to enjoy some of the lengthier combat sections. There aren't many of them, but at times you're locked in a room or a boss fight or a wave mode and it's tough. It's those moments where that old school punishing vibe creeps in. Yeah, they were hard. The combat isn't the strongest part of this game, and I'd say it's actually more fun to play this on easy just to get through those sections quicker. Yeah, I do like that most of the combat is a puzzle within itself, though. It's not just shoot all the things. Me too, and letting rip with those torpedoes is super satisfying. But despite a few frustrating sections, uh, oh, like dragging those bombs around to like blow up the walls. <laughs> why, why would you do that? Besides those, I was really impressed with this. Yeah, I was too. I mean, as you say, there are some frustrating sections, but every time I put this down, I ended up just not being able to stop thinking about it and then I would pick it up again. Yeah, dare I say it, Hex, this game won me over so much, I grew to love it. And it was because the more I played, the more the complexity of the puzzles and overall design started to reveal itself. And over time, I found a deeper appreciation for it. Yeah, I mean, it's a passion project. You can feel the love that's gone into creating every section of this complex world. And I love the feeling of this game too. You know, you're always pushing against the current, making meaningful progress, but slowly. Yeah, visually too. I mean, the world opens up the more that you play. Especially that abandoned clockwork feel to the cities and the few moments you get to zoom about in the wide ocean. So, Bajo, is this the first underwater game since Echo the Dolphin that you've actually really liked? I think it might be Hex, you know, despite those jellyfish and the <laughs> scariest underwater dog companion thing that has ever been created. Just a funny looking little sea serpent. A baby leviathan. Song of the Deep's charm totally won me over. I'm giving it four stars. It's three and a half from me.